Okay, Dr. Benita here for another week of Hashtag Live Surgery Tuesday. Today we have a young lady who's well known to me, had a major wrist surgery about almost 10 years ago, but developed this Dupuytren's contracture, very, you know, I won't say common, but something certainly as hand surgeons we see a lot of, less, much less common in women. Um, and popularized, as I said, by this uh, football quarterback. You know, it takes an athlete or a singer to make something <laughs> noticed by the media, right? But that's the way it is. And um, here we are. So the, the difference here is this young lady will actually be uh, watching it like all of you. So, you know, if you have the right patient, somebody who's interested and, um, you know, uh, very engaged, it, 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 it's fine. So we're gonna get started. All right, so we have our drawn out, and normally I don't draw my incisions, but for a burner, just to be sure, um, I, li I like to, uh, uh, <laughs> can, you, yeah. can you turn the volume off on hers? Or, or maybe just a little lower. I'll take skin hooks. Turn it off, because she could hear I'll us here. Yeah. Yeah, sure. <coughs> uh, doubles. <laughs> Best if you come behind me, I think. Okay. Um, Those of so. you that are tuning in now, viewer discretion, if you don't like surgery, please don't report it. Just tune out. The important thing for colleagues, is, as they know, is um, we don't know typically what a neurovascular bundle is. So you always want to start pretty superficial. Shout out to my mentor, uh, one of my many mentors, one of my main mentors in Pittsburgh, Joe Imbriglio, as a fellow in Hansard, who used to always be amazed that he did this with no tenotomy, only a 15 blade the whole way. Um, the other thing for colleagues, shout out to uh, uh, his name I never, I never, oh, uh, Grabo, Ryan, oh, Ryan, Grabo, yep. Ryan Grabo. Grabo, shout out to Dr. Ryan Grabo, who's a ham surgeon in Indiana, and came up with this Swiss system. So this headset that Dr. Bidia is wearing is recording um, his view, you can actually, oh shoot, disconnected there, so you can't see his view, uh, there you can, so you can see his view there, and then there's a camera up here that you're seeing on this view. We've got good hemostasis on the way in. <clears throat> so, many of you know me, our past fellows. Um, it was actually a surgical tech at Doctor's Hospital one day. Dr. Padilla, why do you release the tourniquet before? And I said to her, Cynthia, I go, you are right. And that was it. So you can learn something from everybody on the team. I used to release a tourniquet and you, there's just no way you can get all these bleeders. I think Dr. Joe and Brigley away. would be just using a, a blade here, but I'm not as brave. Bienvenido, Dr. Hernán. Minela, Dr. Omar. What I typically do now here is possibly a, a spiral cord. So you gotta be careful because, and I'm sorry, but I'm gonna do this all in English today. Maybe I, may, I can answer some questions in Spanish later, but <laughs> I wanna be. I wanna... Welcome, Dr. Charles. Dr. Alejandro Balsang. Okay. So the different ways I tend to divide. So this is the pretendinous cord. Now you're gonna see we'll be able to straighten the finger. I'm gonna divide this because it just helps us. And it looks like it looks like a tendon, right? It's always a little bit weird to divide this because you think, my gosh, it just it looks like a tendon. Obviously, we know it's not. The reason I divide it is it's going to allow me to work easier so the finger's not bent. Okay. 
it's really, it's amazing. It looks like a tendon. It's like it's a little scary. <laughs> so there now. So here's. Okay. So now what we're going to do is. Um, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So now let's get. Um, we need a. a, a, a do we have a single stem? So as we go proximal, we know the neurovascular bundles are going to be sitting a little deeper. So. You don't have to worry as much here, but right around the PIP and all, you really gotta, really gotta focus. Yeah. You can see the thickened Palmer fascia there. Now I have colleagues who do this under Wallant, which is wide awake, which we're doing. <laughs> I'm on Netflix watching you. <laughs> yeah, if this gets boring, just go ahead and you know watch whatever you want. Right? <laughs> I started watching. Um, I do this at like midnight. I get all my work done, and I say I got to clear my brain. So I was watching uh, Homeland. Kate, um, you always recommend my mini series. Have you seen that one? I have not seen that one, but if you want a documentary, just watch the Sean White documentary, which is pretty good. Oh, I want to see that. I, I like that. It's a four episode. The Carrot Head, yeah. <laughs> that guy's amazing. Yeah. See, see, this is what we talk about in surgery, don't you? Everybody <laughs> thinks it's, you know, nurse scalpel. <laughs> we used to call that the Chicago Hope. Remember that TV show? I, I know the name, but not one that I've seen. So that's a little, that's now, see, I'm starting to see a Pacinian corpuscle there, so then we know we're around the neurovascular bundle. So, that's where my ears perk up. Got a lot of colleagues signing in to watch you. Well, Dupatrins is common, you know, and there's different ways to do this. I, 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 I'll talk, I can talk about it later, but I used to try to do this transverse incision in the palm and, you know, minimally invasive and stuff, and he's healed so well. You know, I did, I did a percutaneous um, um, fasci, um, fasciotomy not fasciectomy, we're doing a fasciectomy, they were removing. I did that on my dad in uh, room four of my, of my office. And yes, he figured it was straight, but six months later, it came back with a vengeance. And I had to do this. And I, you know, obviously I see my dad a lot and I forget to ask him about, you know, the scar, because it's almost like it never happened. You can't even see it. <laughs> of course, my dad is from Valencia, Spain, so he's, He's so white that he glows. I've never seen my dad really at the beach. Whereas I have some of that Cuban blood like my mom. But my dad, you know, people with light skin like that, like they, they just, you know, I'll, you know, Kate and I will take the credit for the, uh, the scar, uh, but the reality is it has a lot to do with how, how the patient scars. And obviously you want to you know, be, be very detailed with your closure. We do uh, oblique horizontal mattresses, you'll see. All right, so we're down to the flexor there. Okay, it's right underneath. Okay, so now we're just directly over it. Now I do an A1 release. So we're gonna do a pulley release because the one thing that they, they can get is a little more pop See, this is where, this is where Dr. Malikia is a cowboy and I'm a little bit of a wimp. <laughs> I, I, I want to make sure. All right, so the best thing to do now is, follow, is get the neurovascular bundle. Okay, so common digital nerve right there <coughs> above the vessel. 
Okay, so we know it's there. Eh, saludos desde Colombia, excelente trabajo. A ver, eh, ¿quién está? Dice Doctor L M I H. I think it's an abbreviation. Ah, okay. okay, so now we gotta find. Okay, give me a little bit of uh, pronation. Let's get a, a towel under there. Doctor so Mariano my... Obaid wants you to explain the procedure. Oh, so we're, yeah, we're doing a, a, a Dupatrin, a pre tendinous core Dupatrin fasciectomy, a Dupatrin with um, using a Brunner incision. So, estamos basically una incision y estamos ahora buscando el paquete neurovascular. El saludo de Colombia fue de parte del doctor Luis Izaguirre. Saludo desde Argentina. How about Algeria? Is Algeria in the house? Last, last time we had. Uh... Who else do we have on? If you guys could comment below and let us know where you're watching. So here's a, a bit of a uh, not a pretendinous, but a, a a spiral cord. All right, so we got that. So the neurovascular bundle's in here. I, I saw it. So it's all the way down there, so. There it is, see? The, you know, the problem is this tissue is pulling the nerve. There it is, see? The nerve is right there underneath my tenotomy. So you gotta be very careful here at the dissection, because it's right there. Okay. Okay. okay, so now we got so there's our neurovascular bundle. So now okay now now I'm gonna go ahead now look the finger's straight now, right? So now I'm just gonna get I'm going to remove most of this core just to minimize the recurrence. But the reality, we already did what, what she needs, which is to be able to extend her finger. All right, but we don't want to do this blind, so I'm going to go ahead and dissect a little more here. How you doing? Great. Awesome. Great patient who can... This is so fascinating. Look at this. <laughs> interesting. Everyone's different. It's so fat. for the lay person, is that all fat tissue? Yeah, this is all fatty tissue, but right there, see, there's the nerve. You see, look, look the nerve for my colleagues, there's probably a bit of a retrovascular cord that's pushing the, the, the digital nerve and the artery, which is right behind it, as usual. It's pushing it medial, so, or, or central, I should say. All right. I mean, that, you know, you, 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 you just you can't be too careful. That, that's the reality. It's 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 just this is this is the whole thing about Dupatrin surgery. So we'll go ahead and and, and release the yeah yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. you know, I don't know what happened. We've had a lot of people just tune in now. If you could explain what is Dupatrins? So du Dupatrins is, is uh, well, actually, I don't know. If I knew, I would have a Nobel Prize. Maybe with a Nobel Prize going to Sweden and all that stuff and having to wear a, you know, you have to wear a, it's not black tie, it's white tie. Right? Well, let's simplify the question. What are the okay. symptoms? <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so now for the lay people, let's let's make sure. So we don't need to. I don't want to release more than. But here, here's a flexor tendon. All right. Okay. So I'm going to preserve the A2 pulley, which is right there. But I want to make sure it's freed up. I'm not going to release this because the the, the vinculum, the blood supply to the tendon. But okay. I think to answer the question though, and do the <laughs> <laughs> I'm not very good at this, I'm sorry. <laughs> a cord forms 
superficial to the tendon, and it it forces flexion of the finger, and the patient could not extend her finger until Dr. Badia released and removed some of that cord. Yeah. It's, it's really a disease of the, uh, of the palmar fascia, which separates, uh, you know, which, which is, is different type of, it's a glaber skin in the palm, which is very different than the, the skin on the top of your hand. Or, or, you know, the difference between the top of your foot and the bottom of your foot. I have a question in Spanish. Um, so this is this uh, uh, re, uh, this is uh, Brunner's, which is a zigzag incision, and, and you'll see. So here's a triangle, and that'll fit in there. Are you okay? No pain. Yeah, okay. she's doing great. Okay. So now the last thing. Oh, we do have Algeria here. We do. Right. <laughs> they were asking, would you need a flap? No. Um, you know, generally not unless they're really, really bad. Uh, Doopies. If, if it's really bad, then so look. Here's her, here's the here's the nerve. Yes, it, uh, again, being very careful here. Dr. Mariano, yes to the Z plasties. So the nerve is on the other side, I can see it. Okay, so this is the most distal part of the pretendinous cord. There's a retrovascular cord there. And we don't send this to pathology because we know exactly what it is. Now I'll make a comment on that because you know I have to criticize the healthcare system. All right, that's money that we would spend. The pathologist naturally needs to get paid. But we know this is Dupuytrens. In the hospital, they would make me. All right, and I won't say because I was chief of hand surgery at one hospital. They would make me. Well, it's like they don't even tell you. They just. They just, it's just it. protocol. And they would make me send it, but of course the hospital wants to make money, and I understand that, but to a point. Right? Alright? It's twenty percent of our GDP. So when when the politicians care about it, well, we'll see, because I haven't seen it yet. I've listened to the two Republican debates, and this is not a partisan issue. I listened to them and there was not even a comment. The only comment that the last one was about whether the government should pay for gender dysmorphia surgery. I was like, wow, I can't believe okay. I can't believe I'm hearing this. I mean, that, that, was, that was the extent of discussion. We're, we'll, we'll, um, we're doing great, we're doing great. Just hang in there. They need to buy your book. <laughs> oh yeah! What, what, shout, shout out, out to the you? book. <laughs> I'm gonna have the patient shout out the book. <laughs> this, this is indeed is unique. You can say hello. I'm gonna hello. put it on the spot. Did you read that? <laughs> yeah, I'm getting a signed copy tomorrow. Oh, all right. Read uh, some reviews. It's amazing. Doctor Lucian says hello from Rome, Italy. Hello, wrong my man, I miss wrong. You want to talk about your next adventure? Um, Do you have the Becker's thing coming up? Yeah, next, yeah, next Wednesday I go to, uh, go to Chicago to speak about um, giving a lecture on post-pandemic post changes in orthopedic health care. Ooh, yeah, and you know I'm going to be talking a lot about doing surgery in places like this instead of the big expensive COVID-laden hospital. And the hospitals, 
they have a big role, but I don't think doing outpatient surgery like this is really the most cost-effective way to spend our healthcare dollars. Okay, now there's a little cord there, so let's let's get that just because I'm a little bit, like most hand surgeons, I'm a little bit anal. Sorry about that. I think the patient would appreciate it. <laughs> Miss Kate knows you're doing a single skin hook there. A lot of you guys are sending requests to join the live video. We cannot do that because there's so many of you trying to do it, but you can definitely write questions and I'll read them out loud. Okay. So we're gonna get this little, yeah, there's a little bit of cord. So here's a, the bundle, here's the vessel behind it. So for. Okay. Let's get a little, uh, a little irrigation, please. Okay. Section to your right. Little, little branch vessel there. That's. What does the therapy look like in these cases? Um, maybe, you know, wound. Just wound care? Yeah, wound care. And there's a nerve, there's a vessel behind it, there's a little little vein there that, that would go. But the, the vessel looked like, like the, the artery is actually behind it, and there's a digital nerve. Okay, that's more, that's more of it. Let's get repeated soon. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for the, so for the hand therapist watching, um, obviously wound care, um, we're gonna make, the, the ther our therapist will make a thermoplast splint. So she'll sleep with a, with a Velcro there and here, but she'll be able to use her hand. But because as the scar contracts and matures, it can cause not so much the dupatrins, but the scar itself can, can contract a little bit. Okay. And again, no reason to release a tourniquet now other than the patient begging me, but she's not doing that yet, thank God. Um, <laughs> because uh, there's no way to control all those little bleeders. So it's all about uh, compressive dressing and elevation. So, and the staff here is, I think, absolutely nauseated with hearing me go into the recovery room, but the patient cannot have their hand on their, on, on their chest or their belly because that's not above the heart. It has to be above the heart. It's all gravity for the first you know, day or two. Okay. So that's what we call a little corner stitch. So this is absorbable. If you can show, uh, Bella, if you can show them the suture, this, is, mm -hmm. this saves your team and your patient a lot of aggravation. These resorb, all right, we use that on your wrist, right? Remember, we never took out stitches, right? Yeah. Yeah, you know, I mean, removing stitches is, is God, it's so like 20th century. <laughs> and, and allows you to do a nicer mattress stitch because you don't have to worry about removing it, so. I'll introduce Lauren's gonna be working with me next. Mm -hmm. Okay, a lot of time, but I'm having so much fun talking to everybody, and now I can answer questions that I'm gonna go ahead and probably close most of it. Okay, you don't mind? If you guys have any questions, now is the best time to write them. Para los que tienen preguntas, ahora es el mejor momento para escribirlas. Good. Okay, good. She's doing great. Yeah, you know, it's not, that's not for everybody. If you're anxious, uh, it, you know, it's, but you know, the beauty of, I mean, you know, 
look, we're not, like, like I said, we're not this big impersonal hospital. I mean, we're a specialized center. Yesterday, I think they did some spine surgery here. And, yeah, and, you know, we do, uh, um, I think on Wednesday, some we do a lot of hip and knee replacements. I do shoulder replacements on, I had one today, but he, he postponed for some reason. Uh, but uh, point being is that, you know, we're able to personalize it. And if a patient can tolerate, I mean, she's going to, the good news is she'll be able to eat right away. And I know she's going to want to. <laughs> I know I want to. Um, whereas when you get, you know, sedation and all, you, and forget general anesthesia, but that's something we really don't do here, hardly at all. So when you have question. a good anesthesia team, they can do a block. So. Yeah, question for anesthesia. What did you use on this patient so that she's awake and pain-free? Um, we did original block, and I gave her some Versed for the block and a little pain medicine for the tourniquet, collar tourniquet. She's here holding her phone. <laughs> <laughs> she's, she's doing good. How, how, uh... How am I stitching? <laughs> what are your thoughts on how he's stitching? I think he's great. <laughs> the uniqueness of here is that you guys really do work with the team. Yeah. And you feel special coming in and they pay attention to you from the beginning and it's not like you're part of the family. So yeah. your journey of getting your this journey for me getting my hand on has pleasant experiences around it, not you know, it's just nice. Oh, thank you. Well, we, you know, one of the, I want to shout out, there's, uh, I had dinner um, with them in Toronto at the Hand Society, but there's a, um, a group that was started by a very forward-thinking colleague. He uh, has visited here on multiple times, Dr. Brutus. So Jean-Paul Brutus is a, man, I thought I was a rebel. Mm -hmm. Dr. Brutus is the, he may not be now, but he's the, <coughs> maybe the only true private practice hand surgeon in Canada. Anybody knows about Canada knows that, any, I mean, a surgery like this, you'd have to wait a year and a half for I'm not kidding. And he was tired of that and said, you know what, there are patients who say, you know what, my hand or my shoulder is worth something to me. Maybe I'll take one less vacation. Maybe I won't buy that, that plasma TV and I'm going to have my hand fixed. And um, he, now, he doesn't see a million patients, but he gives them that experience. And he started something called the Exceptional Care Network. And it's all very like-minded surgeons. So I had dinner during the hand study uh, just last week, or previous week. And um, um, so my colleague Xavier was there, who, um, who, who works in uh, the south of France. There was uh, Elizabeth Hager, who's from Stockholm, but she's actually working in Qatar. She's recruited by the big sports medicine hospital. She's, and, you know, we try to give that special experience. Okay, we got to get those scents. He does this aromatherapy in his waiting room. Dr. Buddhist does? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. See, she likes it. See, I want to do it. I just told you for that. Yeah, I just, I just, honestly, sometimes you're so busy there. So did you do stitches on your knees and now you're doing stitches on your knees? Nope, no need to do stitches on your knees because there, there's no tension on it and there's not a lot of uh, tissue to hold that, what we call subcutaneous stitch. So, um, so this is, I mean, this is called glabrous skin. It's very, this skin is very different from the top where you can lift it up. Right. So it, it holds stitch very well. And because I don't have to remove them, this is a, um, we'll take a couple of fluffs. If you can. Mm -hmm. So we don't have to remove them so we can actually make them snug, evert the skin. Whereas if you have to remove them, you always have to be conscious about being able to, to get it out. Makes it neat and tidy. Yep. Yeah, in initially it just looked like you were doing something internal. And now it looks like you're just a bit more above. Okay. Well, the, the, you know, the, I mean, the real work's done. I mean, we, we did the fascia. I mean, the fascia was removed, and this is this is one of the big, one of the thick pieces. 
And that's what wasn't allowing her to, to extend, right. extend her finger. Don Wallant was at that uh, dinner. Don is really credited with the whole uh, Wallant. So he would do this differently, part, partly because he doesn't have a luxury of having this incredible OR down the hall. So he has a procedure room in his office because of the Canadian system. So he couldn't get a surgery like this done. So he has a procedure room because this doesn't need fluoroscopy or anything like that. So. Um, and he would have put the block, he typically would put the block in himself. And that block would contain epinephrine, right, adrenaline, which will constrict the blood vessels and allow him to do it without a tourniquet. Now, we didn't even need that because, yes, we used a tourniquet, but she's able to tolerate it very well. And again, that depends on the patient. So we have a question from Indonesia. His name is Brant A, and he's asking, what about steroid injections in the early phases? That's a great question. I, I haven't done it. I don't, I don't have any uh, criticism of that. I, I just haven't seen any, right, Kate? We've never really done that. We, yeah. we, I mean, so, uh, Sophie, what? Let me have one, one, one more. So I'm gonna show you, Kate, should I show them how I do my, so we have. I think. You know where I'm going with this, but when you do a fluff dressing, it's going to go between the fingers. It has to be very <laughs> feminine. Okay? You gotta have it. <laughs> All right, so this is what the fluff. Is. All right. Dr. Badia, thank you for sharing. Nice teamwork and atmosphere. Thank you. Well, that, that it is, for sure. So I want to make sure I see the tip of the finger because I want to see the blood rush back into it. So, um, Okay, turn it down. She's going to love me now. <laughs> it might, it might tingle and yeah, feel a little funny at first. It feel very funny, actually. Before it feels better. <laughs> I bet. <laughs> Turn again down, so watch, let me, let me watch it. Immediately pinked up. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we know the vessels are good. Okay, now I don't, now I can sleep well tonight. And believe me, every hand surgeon has had that experience where you do not sleep at night. When you have a, a patient maybe like a smoker or, uh, you know, not, not all, but in many cases and the, the the little vessels don't respond well to the manipulation. It's amazing that flu, when you first released it, it was really cold and then it was really hot. Is that right? Foster? Foster and hot water, please. Okay. So, questions? Um, so, what would you do in the initial stages since you decided? Steroids wasn't your first go-to. Um, <laughs> what's the question? <laughs> early, early conservative treatment. Oh no, I, I you know, I mean, people talk about stretching. You can maybe wear a, 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 a splint, but I mean, mm -hmm. the tissue's there and the tissue contracts. It's called a myofibroblast. A myofibroblast is a connective tissue cell that has some contractile properties. And nobody knows why, why, why this occurs, but if a cord wants to occur, I'm not sure you can really stop it, honestly. And, and our patients have been watching uh, the whole time. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's like a hall of mirrors. If I look at myself, is it is it interesting? <laughs> right? Right, right? Yeah. yeah, like let me see. See yourself live. <laughs> Such a weirdo, I know. Okay, you better come and see this on my end. 
<laughs> Where did you visit us from again? Uh, Cayman Islands. We, we, wow. She had a, uh, a four-corner fusion. I should have shown her more. We showed it a pre-op. Mm -hmm. I mean, you have great, good motion. Yeah, we can show her x-ray. She had a scaphoid non-union and a lot of pain, typically there, limited. And um, so she's got good motion. Not normal, but good functional motion. So would you recommend patients from the Cayman Islands come into Miami? Actually, I'm going to comment on that. I went to the opening. I think it was a wonderful thing when they opened uh, the Shetty Hospital. Yeah. But the problem is, in, uh, depending on the stock market, it's 45 to 55,000 people, large financial. And the reality is a country that size, Caribbean, cannot for the most part. Um, so when they opened that, you know, I went there to support, but, you know, I knew. And for, for a while, I wasn't really seeing many patients from the Caymans because, you know, people wanted to go to that hospital, understandably, but I think people realized after a while, you know what, you know, you want to go to somebody that has big volume, and usually for hand surgery, you have to kind of go to a city, you know, a good-sized city, usually. Uh, Hi, doctor. Yeah, but, yes, but we will send you the link. You got to live in a populous area. You know, you can't. You know, I mean, I do have some colleagues, very good colleagues, who are living small, but they've managed to, to to get a lot of regional patients. So this is just until your splint is made Thursday. And that splint will will allow your your index and middle to do this, but we'll. Touch it, that's mm -hmm. one more transfer to take. Mm -hmm. I have his breath. <laughs> okay, that's your second. Leave your hand loose for me. Okay. And then we can peek here. All right, nice and pink. I touch it, it blanches, it pinks up right away. Okay. So this is just a temporary dressing, and the main thing she's going to do is really strict elevation. When oh, will yeah. she start moving? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. When will she start moving without the oh, thermal uh, splint? No, she'll start. Uh, she'll start really. You know, we'll do a little bit of wound care Thursday. Are you here Friday or not? Yeah. So Friday we'll do a little wound care before she goes to the airport, and then we have excellent uh, therapy colleagues okay. in the Cayman Islands. Just because for years we've had patients from there, and uh, they'll and then they'll they'll get her to start moving. I mean, within. 30 days, you'll be able to make a pretty good fist and open it. And then you get back to your hobbies or whatever you want to do. Okay. Okay. I'm just going to show the so x-ray. Yeah. So I'll show her previous uh, x-ray. So this is not a good wrist film. So let's, let's, let's. You can bring this one. Oh, but this is going to be from, some, from a different... A different injury. No, no, I want to, that's what I'm going to show. I want to show her wrist. Um, that was when I saw her, I think, for her basal joint on the other side. Well, well here's a, so here, so here is the, the four corner, this is a plate from uh, Switzerland. This is a company called Medartis, but there's no scaphoid there anymore. She had a bone there that was impinging. And so all of her motion, all of her motion now is between the lunate which is now in a neutral position. Before it was like this, it was, is now neutral. So all of her motions between the lunate and the radius. There's no mid carpal, obviously, motion. And Kate, can I show? Can I uh, pull up the pre the the old film? Let me see if I can grab it. Here you. I'll show you her scaphoid. Kate, you want to turn it off here? You're, you're off. Oh. So there's a trend going on three things that you wouldn't do as an orthopedic surgeon, like maybe a sport you would never try, something you would never do, oh. knowing what you know. <laughs> oh, wow, that, uh, what, was that, what was that thing that, that, that for everybody got for Christmas? Oh, a one would, wheel, my, my brother. No, not the one wheel. The we hoverboard. Was it the hoverboard with the two wheels yes, that you? Yes, the hoverboard. Uh, <laughs> no hoverboard. Right. Um, I'm not going to helicopter ski any. You know, I, I would have done that years ago, but I'm. You know. um, and. Um, Hands off. 
and well, actually, and get out of network with a lot of insurance companies. Okay, you should be paid fairly for your work. Okay, and I'm sorry, but when the, when the president of, of Blue Cross Blue Shield makes a thousand times what I make, and I'm the one doing the work. That's a no-no. All right, here we go. No, Kate, not this one. So there's the fusion. Oh, you want the pre? Yeah, the pre. Oh, here we go. Okay, here we go. Oops. Aha, um, uh -huh, there we go. I think, I think you can just close this. Right, here we go. Okay, so this is what was hurting her before. The scaphoid looks like two bones. It never healed. So, and she had an arthritis here, but she, she's got a good joint here. So we move the scaphoid, fuse these bones together. All right, and that's... Okay, see, she's got a good joint here and not here. So that's called the four-corner fusion. It's a way to relieve pain, but maintain motion of the wrist. Okay. Thank you all for joining us. Uh, uh, Dupa trends, it's a relatively common thing that we see as hand surgeons and... Um, and not just John Elway has it. <laughs>